wildflowers. George had never seen so many colors anywhere else but in his crayon box. And they smell better than crayons. George wanted to share his discovery. After all, who doesn't like to smell nice flowers? George tried telling her to be a good little cow. Leslie obviously didn't speak monkey. So George tried to speak cow. More cows were coming. Maybe this whole field had once been filled with beautiful flowers, and they'd already eaten the rest. As the cows went in for their afternoon milking, George felt like a big cow-stopping failure. wasn't easy, but George wasn't going to give up. Why was that wall stronger than George's? <laughs> These stones were staggered, which made the wall stronger. This would be the best cow-proof wall a monkey ever built. If he finished it in time. George promised the flowers that he'd save them. George's wall had saved the last flowers. <sighs> the next day, George brought the man with the yellow hat to see how he helped the flowers. <laughs> You're taking me to see these flowers? Okay, I'm coming. I don't see any flowers, George. The wall stood, but somehow the yellow flowers were gone, replaced by these things. Were those your yellow flowers? <laughs> oh, oh, George, it's okay. That's what's supposed to happen. They change. <laughs> well, that's supposed to happen too. Those are seeds. They'll land somewhere and new ones will grow. So George's wall had helped the flowers to survive. And he had until the new flowers grew to think of a way to keep cows away from them. George was conducting an important experiment, testing the bounce factor of the living room furniture. This part of the couch made a different sound. Uh, 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 
that wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. Huh? <laughs> you must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. That, that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. <gasps> the man with the yellow hat lived with George. So why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? But what kind? <laughs> of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat had to hear this. You dreamt about an elephant? <laughs> oh, um, no more nature books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. Yes? Hi there. We're your downstairs neighbors, and... Oh, so nice to meet you. <sighs> George! <laughs> What's he doing? I think he's looking for your, uh, elephant. My what? <laughs> Oh, we heard some loud sounds. Um, very loud sounds. Very loud sounds. Oh, I, I am so sorry. Sometimes I get carried away working on my art. Art? I am an artist. I do murals. I mix my paint here. <laughs> then I use these rubber stamps I made. <laughs> Here's one of my completed works. <laughs> oh, uh, we also heard something like a bag of rocks dropping. Do you use rocks in your work? No. Uh, oh, that was a bag of groceries. It fell off the counter. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm. What on earth is that? Sounds like an elephant finger painting. Huh? <laughs> it does. This was a Saturday that cried out for something special. You know what this morning's crying out for? Huh? Donuts! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Hold on! I, I have to get dressed. I can't go out like this. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm, I'm going. You don't know impatient until you've been a monkey waiting for a donut. How about eggs with those donuts? Hey, count the eggs and write down how many we have. <laughs> Ready. So how many eggs do we have? <laughs> hmm. There are no eggs. Well, why didn't you write zero? <laughs> oh, you don't know. I thought I was teaching you everything, and I forgot nothing. <laughs> Zero alone means no eggs. None at all. <laughs> but zero with other numbers makes them mean a lot more. See, if we write a zero after one, that's 10. <laughs> <laughs> write another zero, that's 100. <laughs> that's 1,000. 10,000. Hey, nice zeros, you've got it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'll go in here and buy eggs while you get the donuts, okay? <laughs> One dozen donuts, please. We'll meet back home. And be a good little monkey. <laughs> George was really hungry. But his order only had a measly one on it. Huh. Huh? Then he remembered what the man with the yellow hat had told him about zeros. <laughs> George, Chucky, good to see ya. Oh, is that an order for your friend with the yellow hair? <laughs> One hundred dozen? Oh, our biggest order ever! Oh, he must be having a giant donut party! George realized what his zeros had done. But try explaining that to a dog. George could only think of one solution to a problem this big. George realized he couldn't go home because then those donut people would know where he lived. So, in the end, George headed home with one dozen donuts. There's no monkey on that dog! <laughs> monkey! We lost him. <laughs> them all <laughs> so in the end George got one dozen donuts like he was supposed to and the hard-working firefighters thought everything was perfect how many left George <laughs> Thanks for helping me with the Nature Week exhibit, George. <laughs> We'd like to see the tracks of all the animals that live around here. <laughs> oh, the swim mask? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go jump in the lake to conduct the Nature Week fish survey. 
Bye. Ah. George wished his photos were more exciting, but there weren't many exciting animals around here. Hey, George. What you doing? Wow, I see you've got almost every local animal except that fawn I've seen in the hills. Huh? A fawn is a baby deer. Bet you don't see too many of them in the city, huh? <sighs> a fawn was just the special, unusual animal George was looking for. Come on, I'll show you where to find it. George still hadn't seen the fawn or learned what its tracks looked like. <gasps> These were the biggest tracks George had seen so far. Something extra large must have left them. They looked like big duck tracks. <laughs> a big duck would make a terrific photo. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> this was like the long track the garter snake made. giant duck with a snake's tail would make an even better picture. <laughs> but a huge snake with duck feet would be the most incredible photo of all. <laughs> Maybe it swam back home. George remembered he'd seen big tracks like these. <laughs> in a book. There they were. Dinosaur tracks. A duck-billed dinosaur. <gasps> and the tracks were headed towards Bill's house. <laughs> Hiya, George. Did you see the fawn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess those do look like dinosaur tracks. <laughs> yep, my new boots were hurting my feet, so I put these on to walk to the lake. I told you I was going swimming, remember? Uh-huh. Hey, now I know what it's like to walk in a dinosaur's footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> With no hungry dinosaurs around, George still needed that special photo for Nature Week. It sounded like Jumpy was hungry again. But George had enough pictures of that squirrel. <laughs> For such big animals, those deer left pretty small tracks. Hey, deer tracks. Wow, you used fruits and vegetables to lure the deer to our house so you could take photos? <laughs> Look at these wonderful deer. Oh. How did you manage to capture such amazing photos, George? Oh, you know George, he just used his imagination. Isn't that right? Uh. <laughs> Whoa. Ah. Welcome to the incredible edible arboretum, a cornucopia of exotic comestibles. Blueberries are my favorite bush-based fruit. Come on, George. Mm. 
It, it looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one. Never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the edible plants guidebook? Um, no, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Rule number two, plants are living things. You can kill or hurt them if you're too rough. So don't pull on them and don't break any branches. <laughs> Come on. Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> and Bill... Bill? Bill, where are you going? Don't worry. I've got my handy backup compass. This way, folks! Bill? A, a sprout never leaves the trail. That, 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 that's rule number three. Bill! Oh, our excitement's really growing because we don't know where we're going. In this direction, green. In this direction, a path. <gasps> George couldn't believe what he was seeing. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. Whoa. Hey, are you a monkey? Cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky. Really sticky. Like... Mud. George! Oh, thank goodness I found you! I'm sorry I left you in that tree. <laughs> oh, Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. <laughs> sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> What's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh, George? <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches and you thought he was hurting the tree. Uh -huh. Oh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster, according to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way. Never mind, proceed. George thought the best way to spend a relaxing afternoon was a visit with Professor Wiseman. <laughs> George is right. Y you need to relax. We'll help. We're very relaxing guys. How about Saturday? <laughs> George is right. Oh, where is the schedule? <laughs> I had a pen. <laughs> oh, there it is. Thank you. 
<laughs> Saturday, relax. <laughs> Let's see. Professor Wiseman needs our help. Hmm. Let's think of some relaxing things to do tomorrow. Uh-huh, that's fun, but she needs to relax. You know, something peaceful. A picnic! That's relaxing! Perfect! <laughs> so the next morning, the man with the yellow hat packed a picnic lunch. I think we have all the ingredients it takes to relax one professor. This is sure to relax you. Well, honestly, I'm just as happy sitting on the ground. But what could be more relaxing than hanging from a tree? <laughs> Watch. You just lie back and let your troubles melt away. Oh, thanks, George. George? Okay, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Feed the ducks. <laughs> you too. Fun, relaxation, ducks. Okay, here I go. <laughs> George, careful! <laughs> uh... No problem, we're still feeding them, right? It's fun, huh? Right? Ducks! But your hat is waddling away. We can solve this problem. You shouldn't. I, I should. Okay, how? <laughs> hmm, we need more weight. Huh. Okay, try again. Accept my apology. Apology for what? I had a very relaxing day. Huh? Relaxing? Exactly. Hands-on problem solving. Not like work where I just answer questions and shuffle paper. Ah, uh, well, then, you're welcome. Well, see ya. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, <sighs> wow. Who knew relaxing could be so exhausting? Uh, sure. <laughs> Come on, George. I think it's time for a nap. Uh. Uh, oh, that's that's a ferry boat. It carries people in cars across the river. George loved cars. But cars and boats together? It was the apple pie and ice cream of transportation. <laughs> Today's our annual model boat show. Big prizes for little boats. George! Over here! What do you think of her, George? Sailors call boats her. I bet a city kid like you never knew that. 
<laughs> yeah. You made that, Bill? Yes, sir. Well, that is pretty impressive, isn't it, George? <laughs> oh, thanks. But it's nothing compared to Mr. Quint's model whaling boat. That's it over there. Draw the nets, laddies. Aye, aye, Captain. And over there is Mrs. Rankin's Ark. And look at all those over there. Ooh. It's some pretty tough competition this year. Now, don't underestimate yourself, Bill. That is one fine-looking boat. Good luck. <laughs> oh, sure, you can stay with Bill. I'll set you up right here. Okay, I'll be over at the bleachers, saving up some seats and sizing up Bill's competition. I'd sure like to win a ribbon, George. To buy this kit, I had to save nine weeks of money for my paper out. Oh! I almost forgot to do my paper out. Could you do me a big favor and watch my boat while I'm gone? <laughs> George couldn't figure out what he'd done to it. It looked perfect. But he knew one thing. No! <laughs> Bill couldn't enter the contest with this boat. George had to build him a new one, and fast. Unfortunately, George had no idea how to do that. Okay, a wide boat, with steam coming out, and a propeller. All done! I'm just gonna drop my bike at home. Would you mind watching my boat for a few more minutes? George? I forgot to close the windows. Thanks for showing me. I would have really been sunk if it happened in the contest. <laughs> Model boating requires utmost attention to tiny details. And keeping the water out. <laughs> Congratulations, George. I, I didn't even know you built a boat. I convinced him to enter it. And did you see this? It says best boat by a monkey. <laughs> That's funny. They must have run out of regular ribbons. I'll take care of this. I'll ask him to make you one that says best boat by a city kid. Most mornings, George went out on the porch to find the paper. Ooh. This morning, the paper found George. Sorry! George wished he could be a paper boy someday. <laughs> but he didn't even know how to ride a bike. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this? Oh, why, this was my bike when I was a boy. I sure had fun. But it was a long time ago. Ooh. <laughs> 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 
George liked knowing the man with the yellow hat was holding him up. By the third day, <laughs> oh. he rode so fast the man with the yellow hat couldn't keep up. <laughs> Very good, George. I think you're ready to ride on the road. <laughs> now remember, always watch where you're going, stay on the right side of the road, and signal turns, like this for left and this for right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and be a good little monkey cyclist. Bye-bye. <laughs> I came out so fast, but I'm gonna be late for school. Hey, could you finish my paper up? <laughs> <laughs> Trusted with a paper route, it was like George's wish had just been granted. Every house on the road gets a paper, including the houses across the stream. Uh -huh. Yes, George had become just like a real paper boy. Nothing would stop him from completing his route. The last time they came to the stream, the man with the yellow hat made paper boats. George thought he remembered how. His boat was so good, George decided to make a whole fleet. Be a paper boy. <laughs> That's an important job. <laughs> Looks like you've delivered them all but one. Another day's hard work almost done, eh? <gasps> George couldn't wait for his newspapers to be sun dried. George had promised Bill he'd deliver all these papers. If it didn't get done, Bill could lose his job. Uh Maybe the man with the yellow hat knew where to get dry papers. Hey, hold on, George. How about we just buy a few dry papers and deliver them right now? And so, George was able to finish his route just like a real paper boy. Maybe I should buy a new bike for myself, too. <laughs> Sorry, 